Stick with me because I'm going to teach you a very simple and inexpensive way to make hard cider. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy this section of my brewing series. Today we're going to talk about how to make dirt cheap, really good hard cider. And I'm going to show you a real simple way to do it. Now before we get into that, if this is the first time you're at my channel, I do a variety of different stories, but all my stories always have a positive message that help you get ahead a little in life. So this will show you how to save a little money and make a little healthier alcohol if there's such thing as a healthy alcohol, right? But it'll also, it's just fun to brew. If you haven't tried it, this is the simplest and easy way to brew. One thing I do want to say is even if you don't drink alcohol, brewing is still a lot of fun and it's a very useful skill for self-sufficiency. You can use this to um, make vinegar. You can convert alcohol to vinegar. You can also use this to make alcohol for a car and antiseptic. So just because uh, we're watching this brewing video and you don't drink doesn't mean you can't find this useful. You can find lots of uses for alcohol. So enjoy this. Here we go. So before we really begin, I'm going to use these containers, these glass gallon jars, because I like the wide mouth because you can put your whole hand in here and clean it. It's a lot easier to clean than... Uh, the traditional necks and then these screw right on top so these what I think are I, th I think the pair was about $25 altogether and it comes with the bubblers and the the lids I like it a lot so first thing you're gonna do is sterilize these puppies and how we're gonna do that is we're gonna put this this one step no rinse cleanser um, in some water and then dunk the jars in you're going to use about as hot as water as you can stand. A scoop of this. Now, if you don't have this, you can use soap and water. It usually turns out just fine, but this is a lot easier. Just let stuff air dry. So I'm going to do that, and we'll be back. We're going to do one tablespoon here per gallon. So this thing will probably, I'll probably put about two gallons in, so I'm going to put two scoops. And you want to sterilize because if there's stray kinds of bacteria, the wrong kind of yeast, it'll make your brew taste funny. So it's just a good thing to do. So everything here has been sterilized, dried, and then refilled. So I am using champagne yeast. I love champagne. I like the taste it comes out with. But you can use different kind of yeast to get different flavors. Um, if you want sweeter flavors, there's some uh, British yeast that are good for that. So the thing about this, though, is when you buy this packet, it is for five gallons, and I'm only making one at a time. So I had to cut this um, five ways. Now, you could weigh it out, but I don't really have a scale that's working for that. So I know that this package still has three uses left. I've already used two of them. So what I do is I just cut them up. You know, and, and the even looking rows, and that's pretty good. Your your yeast doesn't have to be exact, but you can't like double it or something, or you'll probably blow up the bottle. So you just got to be careful um, how that's done. Now, the other thing about yeast is you'll get much, much better start if you put it in warm water and mix it before you throw it in your batch. The temperature has to be between, uh, the package says, for you... International folks, 38 to 41 Celsius. For If you're in the U.S., between 100 and 105. Now, I don't have a thermometer. So what I do is, I know that's about shower temperature. When I put my finger in it and it doesn't burn, it's shower temperature, we're good to go. And now my hands are all sterilized. I dipped them in that stuff so I can touch everything. And uh, so I'm going to heat this water up to about my best guess of room temperature. And that's it. Now, you can completely ignore all these steps. You can just take the water and the yeast and throw it in and not heat, heat up water but it'll take a much slower start um, so you just have to be careful with that okay I'm gonna do this for a rapid start so we can drink it within five to six days so I'm gonna start with a gallon of Musselman's cider now I like this because it's hundred percent juice 
And I know some people are going to bitch watching this. Is, is that GMO or is that it's not organic juice or whatever? And, and I love these people because it's like, I'm only going to destroy my liver with the finest gluten-free, you know, <laughs> organic grass-fed booze. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you're drinking booze. You get to, you, you throw that card out the window. Um, now what you do want to get, any anything will do as long as it's about 100% cider. But you're trying to avoid it if it is made with potassium sorbate. That will slow your yeast down considerably. You can still brew with it, but it takes like six to seven times longer. What happens is the potassium sorbate will block the yeast from growing. Now, the yeast that you put in will can still do its job and eat and, and poop alcohol, but the, um, polysor uh, the potassium sorbate stops that process. So, if you have to, you can use it, but it's not going to be like a six-day brew if you use it. It's going to take weeks. The best thing to do is try to get the natural stuff. If you go to something in season, like an apple farm, you know, if it's in season, you buy the fresh pressed cider, you don't even have to put yeast in it. It's it, There's natural yeast in there that'll work. But, you know, you can only do that a, a month or two of the year. So, most of the time, you're just making it out of stuff. And plus, this was about $5. Um, you know, to make this would be a gallon of hard cider, I would imagine that would cost more than 20 bucks, probably. So... We're going to save a little money doing it this way. I've added the yeast in warm water to the bottom. And then I put in a cup of brown sugar to one gallon. So there's some brown sugar. You can use white, but I think brown tastes better. Now, the problem with this is you want to leave about two fingers in your container of oxygen. Um, and so you set your bubbler up so the water is right at the right line. If you don't, like the one to the left here, I didn't leave enough room, so it's actually bubbling up my cider. It's not so good when that happens. You have to put a towel around it. The other thing to remember is it's important to brew at somewhere between 72 to 78 degrees. I have to use this pad because I live in cold weather, so I'll link that in the description. It's a heating pad that just keeps it steady. It helps it brew way better. So this is the vessel I'm going to transfer the hard cider into and is an also a one gallon jug and the reason I do this is because if you look at the bottom you will see the yeast cake there and you really don't want to drink that um, so I'm going to scoop this out and actually put it in here and I like the nozzle because it's high enough up that even if this forms a little yeast cake in here you can uh, it won't clog it up now, like I said, there is still gas coming off. So if you don't drink um, like a cup or two, you could blow up the glass. <laughs> you know, there's no venting on this. So make sure that, you know, you, you drink it when or at least a portion of it uh, pretty soon after you put it in. So what I'm going to use is the reason we use the, the wide mouth glass here so you can get a ladle in. And we're going to move it over a ladle at a time. Now, if you had a, they do sell like a siphon hose. This is the cheapest way to do it. They do have like siphon wands if you want to put it in bottles. Um, I wasn't going to bottle any of this because it's kind of a pain. This is a fast, easy, down and dirty way to do it. The reason we're ladling instead of just picking it up and pouring it is to not disturb the yeast cake on the bottom. And we're going to leave about the last inch of the alcohol on the bottom because that's where all the cogeners are and those are the things that give you hangovers so I'm gonna leave the heavier alcohols in here and it's kinda of like the easy way to decant it now you can also do it through a cheesecloth or a strainer but I kinda of like the raw cider this tastes like drinking apple juice or apple cider where it's not so um, clear and purified you can put a clarifier in here if you want but I find them gross because they're mainly made up of sea shells and nasty stuff. So I'm going, the more natural, the better. Yes, I know I'm drinking alcohol. <laughs> so not really allowed to say anything. And the funny thing is I really don't drink much. I make this because I just enjoy brewing. I end up giving um, all of it away practically. I'll have a glass and that'll be about it. So we'll clip back here in a second. I'll show you at the end. 
All right, so the hard cider is done. I left about two fingers. Um, that includes a yeast cake. I might take one more dip out of that, one more ladle. That'll give you almost a gallon. You're a little light on a gallon. I leave some air so it doesn't blow out. And, um, and I'll just cap this up and we'll try some. Now, a tip here though, don't throw the yeast cake down the drain. Bad idea. What I do is I rinse this out and I just go throw it in the yard. Uh, it is, you know, it's basically biomatter. Go throw it in the garden. Just don't throw the, too much of the alcohol in the garden. <laughs> Try to get the yeast. So there you go. One more thing I want to say here is once you put this in a refrigerator, it'll really slow down the yeast growth. Now, it will keep going, and eventually this won't taste as good or it'll start getting more and more alcohol. So my advice is to drink this within a few days. Uh, you know, try to try to schedule this so you make it and then, you know, maybe you have some friends over on the weekend or you and your family drink this. One more thing I want to talk about, though, is I recommended it earlier, but I can't tell you how much better it is to have a wide mouth jar for these. It's easier to clean. It's easier to, you know, ladle stuff out of. It's just simpler. Like this, this is my ghetto prison hooch. This was just a free bottle of wine, right? This came in a wine bottle. And although the bottle was free, it was awesome, um, it's much more difficult to clean. And it's hard to decant. You're going to end up getting a bunch of yeast cake. You have to uh, use like cheesecloth and filter it. So if you're going for a low budget, sure, use the free stuff. If you have a choice, I think I paid somewhere around like 23 or 4 bucks for both of these on Amazon. And if you consider that you can make a gallon of hard cider yourself... Um, in a few gallons, you've paid for the whole setup. I mean, you're going to save a lot of money compared to just going and buying it in a store. So, there you go. I will link all that in the description below of all the brewing tools I used. So, this is the hard cider in the Christmas glass. Yeah, yeah. That came out really good. Wow. That's pretty darn good. I think you guys will like that one. I hope that inspired you to finally try to go out and brew. It's really as simple as getting some cider, throwing in some sugar, throwing in some yeast, making sure you know you put a bubbler or a balloon on it, and you're good to go. That's it. So I'm um, I'm very excited. The thing about this though is YouTube doesn't like me showing people how to make alcohol and usually demonetizes these. So you might have to find it over at Library or Speech eventually or over here. I'm also on DTube or Steam it and mine's in BitChute. I'm on all the alternative platforms. If you're over there, please come on over and say hi. And also um, a lot of my brewing series, like I have a video on how to do moonshine. It's a little more complicated, but if you like brewing, just go up to um, lupotv.com up there and all you have to do is sign up for an email list and I don't spam you or anything it just lets you know when when I have a new show and you'll have access to all the private and unmonetized and all this all the videos that YouTube doesn't like like making moonshine it's over there so feel free to sign up uh, all that stuff's absolutely free over there so if you're new please subscribe I really appreciate it if you're a veteran of the show and you've seen a lot of stuff, consider maybe Patreoning. It's right there. For only a dollar a month, you can help me get off the dependency of the YouTube ad dollar. I really want to stop being dependent. It's like a welfare queen. I just want off. Please help me. Go over and consider Patreoning. I'd really appreciate it. And so if you're still watching this on YouTube, right here, you'll see these videos appearing. I'll link some to my brewing series so you can watch a lot more. Enjoy it.